Uh, so I want to introduce, I brought three of my friends to help me because we'll kind of facilitate with a little bit of a panel here. You'll be able to ask questions if you want, but otherwise we got some stuff and we'll kind of talk it out with you guys through the whole time period that you'll know here. And just so you know, somewhere up here for the people who asked me the first three questions, I got gift cards to Dairy Queen. Don't know if that's going to motivate you, but we do have them. So, um, so yeah, you don't get them. So. This is Lamar, Lamar Preston. He's been here for a long time. Katie Sue is another person on staff here. And this is Lisey Felix. She uh, is on our dream team here. And I'll let each one of them tell you a little bit about themselves. Oh. I know. Oh, over here. Oh, is this what you want to go first? No. Sure. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Hello, everybody. How's it going? Better? Okay. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, my name is Lamar Preston. I've been attending Victory Family Church now nah, about 14 years or so. Uh, served. On the volunteer teams, about the amount of time. Um, work. you guys got me out of a work day. Harrison called and said, "Hey, I want to talk to some kids about some some stuff," and I jumped on it. So I appreciate you guys getting up early this morning and letting us talk to you. And we're gonna talk some more about Paris and Disneyland. So you know. Good morning. My name is Lisey Felix. Um, I serve on the Dream Team in the cafe as a lead. So I've seen some of you come through the line. Um, Oh, you know you. Oh, uh, what else is there about me, man? Your mama. Yeah, well, I'm a mama of a 17-year-old teenager uh, who works at Chick-fil-A. So if you ever go there, look up Kaylee. You might get a free burger or sandwich, something. All right. Well, I'm just saying, man, eat more chicken with the cow. I'm Katie Sue. I work here at Victory in the production department, so you probably have not seen me because I'm always behind the scenes. Um, I'm also a mom of two girls, ages four and six, and I'm really excited about today. Hope you guys are too. That's it. Hey, actually, hey, listen, I can give you a fun fact about me. I might be the only person that you guys, you can say you know about, well, a very long time ago, I was actually struck by lightning. <laughs> so. You can now say that you know somebody who was struck by lightning, officially. All right, there we go. And lives to tell the tale. And lives. I know some power to live, that's why. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> well, since they told it, I also have two, well, I got three kids. So you guys might know my kids. Tony is working in production with Katie Sue. So he's behind the scenes. He's got dreadlocks running around here somewhere. And then my other son is 13. He's in the middle school camp. So Lincoln. So he's a little tall, lanky kid. So, like, <clears throat> he's cool most of the time. So, um, all right, guys, I am going to have you real quick. Uh, close your eyes, put your head down. I'll ask you a couple questions. I just want to see what it is. So, first question, eyes closed, head down. Who is comfortable talking about race in general? Who is just comfortable talking about race? Raise your hand. Okay. Similar question, hands down, and then we'll put them back up. Who is comfortable talking about racism? Who is comfortable talking about racism? Okay, thank you. You guys are actually really great, so I'm glad you're in here. 13 out of 16 on the second question, 11 out of 16 on the first question. So that was really good, because I thought it was going to be like three. So that's really awesome that all you guys are in here. We are really appreciative that you're here. Um, so let's get it. Put that down. Anybody in here like Drake? Just curious. No? Drake. Drake. No is, Drake fans. Wow. is Drake better than Kendrick? So I can tell. Oh. Yeah, Drake. Do you think Drake is better than Kendrick Lamar? Who said yes? Who said Drake is better than Kendrick? Because I want to know which one of you to put out. <laughs> no? Okay. Taylor Swift fans. Any? Okay. Okay. Kanye fans, any? Okay. Okay. We won't. We won't. We won't get into the Taylor Kanye stuff. <laughs> you did that in. Yeah, you know. Um. All right, guys. So, how many of you guys go to Seneca Valley? Just curious, real quick, too. Anybody? Seneca Valley, uh, Seneca Valley. Okay, you do? 
Really? Okay. The only two? Three. 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 Yeah, I, yeah, what was that? <laughs> oh. So I have a question. I'm going to start out with a question. Seneca Valley had a mascot that was a Native American, and they have voted to take the Native American away from Seneca Valley. For those of you who go there, what do you think about that? Okay. So first, I, I didn't tell you this, guys. Like, whatever you say in here, this is a safe space. We're not judging anybody. We're really just going to talk some things through and just talk with you about stuff. So whatever you say, it's, it's, it's all good. We're just going to talk you through it. Anybody? Who else was from Seneca Valley? You got an opinion? What do you think? Do you have any opinion on that at all? Not really? Okay. That's all cool. All right. Well, how many of you have seen... I'm sorry. I got to look at my question. Um... How many of you have heard or seen a friend say something that you thought was questionable? Okay. Did you have a way in which you were, did you feel there was a way for you to go and talk to that friend uh, and still show grace in doing so? Do you think that was possible? Were you able to do it? Okay. How do you do it? Yeah. You said no? Okay. Okay. Okay, so the question would then be, right, well, how do, you, how do you have a conversation with somebody if they're kind of like that? You want to show them grace. Yeah. It's a family member. If it's a parent or somebody, too, you still got to be respectful because it's your parent, right? Like, so uh, let's throw that one to Mr. Lamar. Let's go to you. No, I do have a, not to throw a segue into your question here, because I do have an opinion, but I saw a lot of people shake their heads yes. Does anybody, one of these students, have a similar issue? Yes, no, like maybe had a family member say something that was questionable. You did? What's your name? Anthony, hey, do you mind saying, asking, telling us how you handled it as an example? Hey, microphone, Harrison, for, for him, please. Hey, man, it's going to be private. Sorry. Just, no, this is good. Now I'm uncomfortable. No, don't be uncomfortable, man. I lost the train of thought. No, this would be good. So it's not, I don't have like a specific, uh, I don't need the microphone. I got a loud voice. I don't, need a, I don't have like a specific time, but it's like always like a bunch of small things. And um, I usually find it best, especially if you have, like, it's a band member, you love them, you know, and I find that a lot easier to do that because, in general, like, oh, we like each other enough to talk to each other already. So I think it's easier to confront a family member than it would be to, like, another person. Okay. No, that's good. And, and, and your situation and for everybody else, I'll, I'll just want everybody to know the Bible always says obey your parents, or well, it says honor your parents, obey your parents. So I want to make that abundantly clear um we're dealing with family members you know like you said you have a relationship with your family so it should be it should be relatively easy to talk to them but it's okay to say you know you said that i don't think it's right can you explain to me what you mean by that and then we're all here attending a church camp this week if you're not comfortable with the response you can say well can we open the bible and see kind of where it says that you know, and then you together kind of work through that, you know, because the Bible is very specific about uh, inequality and stuff like that. So you're, you're going to find scriptures that support treating everybody equal. You will not find scriptures where it says to disparage a person or divide a person or talk negatively about a people and then go from there. But understand that you can't not always force people to think the same way you do. So if you do that little research and you're not comfortable with the response or the answer of your parents, on your parents always. But you know the Bible, and just go along with it. Now, they're going to say some things that make you kind of get emotionally twisted at times, but the Bible says be slow to anger. You kind of just have to tough it up for a while and just live the life, live the Christ life. And then time, through your lifestyle, things will change. Okay? Was that simple? Good? Yeah? I can get talky at times, so just let me know, Mr. Lamar, you're talking too much or going crazy. Katie, Sue, or Lisi, do you have a way where you found that You've been able to do that. Like at work, it'd be to your boss. At home, it would be to a parent. How have you had a conversation where you've had to say, uh, 
you know, how do you have that conversation? Like, do you just go to your parent and, you know, Lamar said respect them. So obviously we're not just going to go to our parent and be like, you know, that's stupid. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, of, of course, like, these are people who are going to be in your life for the rest of, you know, and you don't want to damage your relationship, but it it's not okay to say nothing at the same time, you know. Um, so it's not one conversation. It's many across your whole relationship, you know, and as you gain more perspective as you go through life, you help them also see that new perspective that you're gaining. So like today, we hope that you gain some new perspective and next time when you have the opportunity, maybe you can share some of that perspective with someone in your life who um, might not have that kind of perspective. And yeah, I just, I try to take opportunities, whether it be current events or specific events in my life as, you know, hey mom, so this happened the other day and this is what I did, what do you think, you know, and like walk it out with them, make it conversational, not like attacking or even like corrective, just make it a conversation and share your heart with them, share how much it hurts you to see that, and when they see that in you, they're going to start to process their own feelings about it, so. Hi, guys. So I have been on the given and the receiving end of that. So um, as much as I would like to say that I've never said anything racist or been racist, I mean, Harrison's wife is one of my pretty good friends, and she's called me out on a couple things that I've said that's untoward. And it wasn't so much that I felt like I was being rebuked or chastised, but it was like, yo, we can't say that, or you can't say that, you know? And it's like, you're, oh, I say that all the time. Well, I used to say that all the time. So you have to change your speech because it's like, you know, I don't want to cause division or cause my brother or sister to falter in their walk of Christ. So I have to watch what I say. So it takes me being a little bit more intentional on things that I say or thought process like, is this going to sound right before I just open my mouth and say, it. Um, I've done it with my daughter, co-workers. I was like, no, you, that's not how you want to say that. Hey, curious, you know, curious, so. not to interrupt, but I want to know how did your daughter, did your daughter come to you and say, hey, mom, that's not, that's not right? Like, because this would be the situation they're all in, right? Like, so how did your daughter come to you okay. and, and talk to you about that? So Kaylee, that's my daughter. Um, you know, I, I'd be watching TV and something would happen and I would be like, oh yeah, that's da 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 da. And she'd be like, you can't say that. That's not right. And I'm like, okay. And then she explains to me why I can't say that or why my opinion was wrong, you know, in, in what I say. Because, you know, sometimes you're saying stuff based upon things you've seen on TV or things that you don't understand. So you're just going with the majority, you're going with the crowd. But Going with the crowd doesn't necessarily mean right. And so she wasn't like, Mom, you're this and you're that. And, you know, just like tearing me to shreds. It was more of, hey, Mom, I know you've said that before, but, you know, because, I mean, I don't even want to say something I did say because it's, it's really offensive. Um, but it was just something I'd heard, and that's what I correlate, correlated to. And to find out that, no, that's inappropriate, helped me change my perspective on what I say. Do you guys have these conversations amongst your friends? Like, are you sit at school and talk amongst friends or just amongst yourselves about things like this, recent injustices or anything out there? Do these conversations come up frequently or? No, you're like, no. <laughs> no, really? Okay. Okay.
feel that it that it was safe for you to have these conversations? Like as you were talking to people, were were people? You said it was safe, but like, have you felt like it was okay to talk to people? Did you feel like it was safe to walk up to a black person and talk to them about what was going on, or did you? Uh, as a black person or other minorities, did you feel it was safe to talk to other people about these things or were you like, I'm just not going to say anything because I don't want to, like, I just want to let it be? When you guys were talking, did you feel like, like, and, and since you brought up like Black Lives Matter, did you feel like people were one, on one side of it, like, hey, I'm either Black Lives Matter or I'm police, or like, or were there people, you know, talking to you on, where they were like, hey, like, obviously I'm black, right? Like, so I think Black Lives Matter. <laughs> but at the same time, like, if somebody's breaking into my house, like, I don't want Lisey coming to help me. I want the police coming to help me, right? Like, so. Um, as, as, as fun as Lisi is, and that's my friend, I don't want her uh, dealing with somebody that's trying to harm, you know, me or my family, right? Like, so um, did you feel like, though, that you had to be on one side of that, or did you feel like, you know, like, no, I can be, you know, I got friends that are black, they're cool, but, you know, I get police, too. Okay. Really, you guys over here, anybody? You, did you feel like that, or? Go ahead. you, and then I'm going to throw a question to Katie Sue here. Have any of you ever felt like because of your race um, that you have been treated differently because of it? You feel like that? You want to give us a situation or you just... had a substitute teacher and um, so I was sitting behind my friend who was white and she and there was this kid sitting in front of us and he was bothering us and we they told him to rudely stop and then he didn't so then I told them to rudely stop and then she told me that oh if you don't have anything nice to say then don't say it and I was like But she picked on you, you felt. Okay. Okay. Anybody else got anything like that? Katie Sue, can you tell me if you feel like you've had that happen to you because of your race? Has anything happened to you? Yeah. I've definitely been uh, treated differently because of my race. Um, I mean, even though I was raised in a fatherless home and in a, a really poor home, I grew up and... You know, I, I got to see people who look like me on TV and in books. And I was taught by teachers who looked like me. And that is something I was afforded because of the color of my skin. Um, when, I, you know, as I got older, I was able to buy a home without a lot of problems. And that's you know, something I was afforded because of the color of my skin. That's not how everyone is treated. Um, not to mention, I can wear a hood wherever I want, and um, I'm not followed in stores. Um, and 
yeah, I get treated different because of the way I look all the time. of like police brutality and that sort of thing um, you know I've kind of been realizing I'm like really listening to you know people and you know there was this um, video I saw this was a father you know teaching his like 14 15 year old son you know they were black about what to do if a police officer had a knee on his neck you know and other you know uh, young you know, black men talking about how, you know, their mothers and their fathers always taught them, you know, don't go out in a hood, right, don't wear this, like, you know, don't go out at night, like, and things like that. And, you know, the whole, you know, with police stops, like, you know, that extra cautiousness. Um, I, of course, I was never taught to do that. I, I, I was never taught, oh, you have to wear a hood, oh, don't go out at night, you know, because you're white, like, and I don't, I don't have like that extra fear of the police. Like I don't have, like if I encountered a police officer, I'm not gonna worry whether or not I'm gonna go home that day. So you brought up something that's so prevalent in the um, black community. You said you never had the talk. Do any of you know people who've had that talk with their kids? Any friends who've had that talk with their parents? And how did that make you feel when you heard about that? Knowing that you've never had that talk, that's never applied to you, how did that make you feel as a person? Uh, one, of my, one of my really good friends from Girl Scouts was black. So, and her mom was our uh, Girl Scout troop leader. So I did hear the talk because she talked about it in our troop and everything. And it was very odd because, I mean, I don't want to pull the ginger thing, but as a ginger, I get all the jokes. I get all the, literally everything. So like, I mean, I've gotten the talk of like, just ignore them, blah, blah, blah. But like, for my friend Tori, she just, she had to have the more, um, yeah, you can't say these things, you can't wear this because then you'll be whatever and it's like it's very I don't want to say frustrating but it kind of is because they're just like us they're normal humans they're sure they look different but what's the point I think that's a great place to ask if it's fresh so yeah thanks I think that's a great place to ask if if that's frustrating what do you do with your frustration about these matters because, like, how many of you guys would think this is a frustrating situation? The, and, yeah, injustices and differences, it's frustrating. And I would say that's, that's probably the, a mild word that a lot of us feel. And how, how do you respond to that in a biblical way? How do you respond to that in a great, you know, how do you respond to it when you feel like my teacher is singling me out because of it? Right? How do you respond to that in a great and in a biblical way so it's not just, you know, the, the most natural inclination, at least for me, my flesh takes over, right? In a, in, a, in a circumstance. So the most natural inclination is anger, right? Like I'm, I'm upset and I want to do something out of that, but that's not how God, that's not how Jesus would, would do in that situation. So I, I constantly have to go back and think about that. So you, you guys tell me, and then we'll, we'll go through and talk the like. If you saw that happen to your friend, you know, in a situation, how did you respond? Or for you, how did, how did you respond? Did you respond in anger? Did you respond and say, I'm gonna call my mom? Or did you respond like, you know, cause that's my case. Yeah, he'd have been like, okay, let me call my dad. He gonna come here and take care of this. <laughs> you know, So were you were you still content teacher? Were you yeah. still or were you just like you can bring your mom bring my work? You know, like what what was your
No, that's the yeah. right response. Mm -hmm. You know, because when I was younger, it would have been, you know, I was a little more heated in my response to that. So, excuse me, that's definitely the right response. Anybody else, like, if you had a friend walk into a situation, is it frustrating? How do you respond? Like, do you say, let me get my, you know, my voice back? Or do you like, So I'm going to say what is biblical about how you react to it. So the word of God say that you can be angry, but sin not. It says, do not render evil for evil. So you don't have to give back what that person is putting in the atmosphere, but you can show your displeasure. You can stand up for your friend. You can defend the defenseless. Does this, it does say that in the Bible. You know, we defend the defenseless. We defend the widows. We defend the downtrodden. That's scriptural. I'm not going to just come up here and say, yeah, you go after that person tit for tat because you're rendering evil for evil, and that's not what you want to do. You want to still let your light shine, but you also want to take a stand. Okay, so I'm not going to stand there and watch you doing that and saying that and carrying on and don't be like, hold up, you know, that's not cool. That's not right. You know, let's not do that. But I'm going to say, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I say I'm not going to stand there and let that happen. I'm going to say, hey, don't do that. You know, I'm going to be like, no, this is not, you know, I, I'll show my frustration. I might get a little heated, you know, start going around like I'm about to pop off, you know. But, you know, <laughs> but I'm just saying, but I'm not going to go over there and just start cursing somebody out and go to fight them or anything because, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at it, we're in a world and we're not of the world. So if we're letting our light shine, we're saved. That person is unsaved. They don't know Christ. They don't know what their limits and boundaries are, but we do. So we got to show them our light even in the face of adverse, uh, adversity. Yeah, good job. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think as white people, we go through um, a journey of awareness. You know, you're less aware, you become aware of differences, then you become aware of how those differences affect people, and then you become aware of injustices and things around those awarenesses. So, and then when you do all that, then you kind of have to decide, like, what do, what do I do? Or do I do nothing? What can I do? And I think that's, like, it, it's easy to get stuck there. What, what, what can I do? This is a big problem. I, what, what can one person do? And I would say I was, like, paralyzed by that for a long time. Like, it's a big problem. Of course, I support, you know, people, but w there's nothing I can really do about it. And I, I really spent a lot of time in prayer and just 
crying to God. I was just so sad. And my heart was broken. And I was like, God, what do I do? And, you know, it's, it's the moments that you take that little bit of influence that you are given and you, um, I refer to it as your seat at the table. You know, you use that little bit that you've got to say something. And that doesn't mean that you're going to affect change and your whole school is going to be different or your family is going to be different the next day. But just be that person. Be known as that person who's going to say something. Like, your friends should know. You can't say that kind of stuff around them because they're going to say something about it. Like, they're not okay with those types of things. And as that grows, then that person, you know, who says the things that aren't okay become the minority and then, and you hope they have a heart change. But usually it starts with action change and things like that. And so I just encourage you to lead, be led by the Holy Spirit in those moments. Like, God, what do I say here? This isn't okay. You don't think this is okay. How would you like for me to handle this? And there are so many examples in the Bible of ways that people handle rough situations. And um, I would just encourage you to, like, God, like, help highlight some of those to me as I read. And how can I, you know, you know, put these into action in my life and in my situations. Um, I'll let you go, but it, it sometimes can be a very, it's a hard situation. My mom grew up in a time where there were still colored water fountains, so she was drinking out of colored water fountains. So her opinion of people, um, sometimes of white people, is very different than that of me uh, and, and how I've grown up. Um, and obviously she's my mom, but I grew up in a different way. I had plenty of white friends. I went to a white school. I go to a, a predominantly white church. Um, so um, my opinion is, is totally different. Um, so it's sometimes hard to challenge that back. So when I'm here and things are happening and she has her opinion about what's happening here, I have to push back against that to my mom a little bit and challenge her thought process. Um, and I can't say that her thought, it's not right now, but in the time she was growing up, right, like it would have it been totally different on how she was treated and, you know, going in the back doors of restaurants and different things where she couldn't do, riding on the back of the bus. Um, so it can be a difficult conversation. I'm, all, I'm talking a little bit of a circle. It's, it is hard to do it, but there is a way to do it and still be respectful to whom you're talking to. Um, and I do it even in our terms of, I grew up in a black church and I go to a white church now. So I do it even in terms of that church. Like my old pastor is really quick to say like, this is what white churches should be doing. And I have to be like, well, we gotta be mindful of that too because here's what we should be doing as a black church. All of this isn't just put on the white church. We as black people also have to be doing some things back, too, to make this situation right. So just wanted to say that. Lamar, you up. Actually, all three of you took all three of my points, which, is, which was outstanding. But, um, no, that was good. No. And you know I always have a lot to say. So that was, that, was, that, was, that was good stuff. But if I could add something is, at least I believe you brought up the scripture, because all this stuff was scripturally based. It was awesome. About um, losing your salt. So the salt is your witness. So the reason you want to respond in situations in love now, love does not always mean like with a smile. It's like Lisa was saying, like you got to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Sometimes you got to be stern, but be godly, right? But the reason you want to do that is because months, weeks, years down the road, those people you had interactions with, God may do something in their heart, then you will be the person to come and talk to. So you don't want to burn that bridge now by being, oh, you, you, you know what I'm saying? So that's why. I have much more to say, but you guys already said it. So thank you for that. Ready to be led away and taken, and he heals uh, that soldier's ear, right? Like, yeah, his, boy cut the ear off. Yeah, his friend cut his ear off. That's right, and he heals his ear. So, and it's, his yeah, and in a situation where he's about to be taken, and I mean, in, I mean, he was being discriminated against. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, so, and he stopped and healed that man. Uh, in the process of, and he obviously knew what was going to happen to him, and he stopped and healed him and did that. So it is, now, Jesus was, you know, obviously much better than any of us. He was perfect. I mean, so he could do that. But, like, just the idea of that happening in that, situ, in that situation, always, I'm always in awe of that, you know. So, um, any I got three Dairy Queen cards, guys. Somebody give me some questions. I want to get these cards away. 15 bucks, Dairy Queen. Oh, she can have one. So we got two yeah. Dairy Queen cards. We'll we got get... two. We got two. Yeah, we got two. One for winning. Good job. Any questions? Any situation you've been in that you're just like, I just don't know how I could have, could I have handled that better? 
or could my friend have, could I have said something different or? I know like um, when all of like the police brutality stuff started like, you know, popping back up, it was on the news again. It's this big, um, it's this big deal. And there was a lot of um, violent protests, a lot of uh, burning down buildings, burning cars, you know, stuff like this. Do you think that if people had thought about it in a, like a faith-based way, it would be a lot more peaceful? You think like if if they had included God in it, it would be they would be less angry about it. Can, can I can I can, can I start on this? Okay, because this was we had a small group, um, and this was part of um, a question that was tossed to us. And I remember someone saying something along the lines that um, they don't understand how the BLM group is resorting to this. And here's what I want to say to you guys. Not everything that you see is part of BLM. You're going to have, no matter where you're at, you're going to have, like we're Christians, we attend victory. There's always going to be that naysayer that's going to come in the church and cause discord. Right? And then, then they're going to say, oh, it's all Christians that are causing discord when it's this one group, this particular, who wants to shine a light away from what is being posit positively put out there. So you have to look at that, that it wasn't those people who were protesting quietly or peacefully, but it was all the outside force. So that's like the devil, okay? Okay. You're going down the street minding your business, and I'm going to give you a perfect example, okay, because I, I just had this brought to me, and I was like, oh, wow. You know, Adam and Eve, they're in the garden, right? God told them not to eat of the fruit, right? So what did the serpent do? The spirit of the devil went into a serpent that God created, and what did he do? He changed the whole rhetoric of what God said. So was it God that did it? Or was it the serpent? So you see how that evil force came in to something that was good? And that's what we see going on in the world today. Yeah. All right? I'll say this. We see just to back that up, because I, I like to use that story, but I, I use it slightly different. And it's just because if they're in a garden, um, I feel like God is a creator and the devil is a cloner, right? Like he'll, he'll do things to... Um, to, to deceive you in that way. So you're in a garden. Uh, if, there, if Adam and Eve were in the garden, if another person would have just walked up and been like, eating this apple, they'd have been like, dude, get out of here. Like, you ain't even supposed to be around here, right? Like, that's weird. But what he did was he sent the animal that's not out of place to be in the garden, right? Like, the serpent wasn't out of place there. Eve was just like, oh, let me. And then she, she did it. So that happens in, through different things. So, yeah, there are people that can be, They'll, they'll say they are something that they're not to deceive and do things. But to answer your question, I do think wholeheartedly if, if people would have been thinking about it, now everybody's not Christians and everybody doesn't have the same faith we have, right? But if people were looking, I lean into this, and I'm even going to say this later on the night. If I view you in the image of Jesus, then I always think differently about you and how I would treat you, right? Like, so if I'm viewing you in the image of Jesus, I'm going to... I'm going to treat you that way. And that's how I view everybody. Like, I have to always remember that. No matter if I'm being treated bad, good, whatever, I view that person like that and, gotta, and I have to show grace to them. And I, and, I, and I try my best to do that. It's not always easy, but that's what I try to do. Um, so in the summer of 2020, when the majority of the protesting was going on, I lived in Memphis, Tennessee, which is like 70% black. Um, and so a very different dynamic than Cranberry and even Pittsburgh, actually like almost flipped of Pittsburgh. Um, and, it, you know, it was an honor to protest civil rights on the same paths that Martin Luther King did there. Like it was a true honor. And um, I wasn't a part of every day of protests, but there were protests for 26 days straight there. And, um, It was very much like the majority of people were there for the right reasons, with the right attitude, with the you know right motivations, and there were the few, and that's just 
and that's in every scenario, whether that be a team at, you know, a sports team or, you know, the people who just don't, aren't there for the right reasons, you know, and, um, that's, and there's, it definitely, like, as the night goes on, the sh there's a shift and, you know, if, if you ever want to participate in a protest, go in the daytime, do not go at night, <laughs> call me, I will go with you, um, but yes. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, there's a shift. And But I would say if the majority of people who were there, even with good intentions, were not Christians. When it came up that I was a Christian, a lot of people were surprised. If more Christians were there, though, it would have been more of a positive influence, and my guess is less negative would have happened. And so I think it's important for Christians to step into activism and set a good example of what faith-based activism looks like. Good stuff. Oh, we got a good stuff. Uh, but like, not realize it's racist. And we've kind of been discussing it the whole time. But I was curious: is there like a really good way to bring that up to them and confront them about that? You say, "Hey, man, you're racist." No, I don't. <laughs> he said, "There are people that are racist, but." They don't know that they're racist. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you kind of expose that, you know, or try to bring that up to them? It's a, it's a great question, right? Because it's a question we were talking about. Like, a lot of people look at other sin, and they're, we'll look at other people, and they'll be participating in the sin and not know they're a part of it. But racism is one of those things where it's like, you can be like, no, I'm not racist, so I'm not sinning, right? Like, but so how do we how do, we do that? I'm going to go first. I know I'm not going to be different. No, you go no, no. first. So I don't want to go. You want to jump? You got paragraphs over there? Is that what's I going on? What is going on over don't, there? Don't, don't, don't be over here. Oh, my God. All right. So we may differ, not on fact, the godly fact. We don't differ, but just may on the, the, way, we, the way we approach it. Okay. So you asked a question about racism and stuff. I try to take out all the noise because I am not a very smart person. And when a lot of people start saying all kinds of stuff, racist, prejudice, blah, 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 blah whatever. Pick a, pick a term. What do you mean? How do you, what? What do you mean? Who did what? I am I a Christian? Am I not Christian? I try to get rid of all that noise. So I try not to listen to too many YouTube videos. And if I do, it's like entertainment. I try not to watch. If I watch the news, it's, it's just to kind of get the use of what's going on and stuff like that. But I have to always, when I get confused, I have to always, always, always go back to the Bible. Because that's the one thing as Christians that we can all agree on and there is no opinion. And, and, and God is very specific about standing up for like inequality in the people who, who, who can't speak up for themselves. So when you're having conversations about racism and you're trying to figure out the terms and the definition, and you're getting all flustered, just stop. Are you being unequal? Are you, being, are you treating the person differently because of pick a thing? Well, yeah, then you're wrong. So I try to keep it that simple and that basic. You see what I'm saying? Because the Bible said it. Now, if you disagree with the Bible, that's on you. I'm going to live the way I'm supposed to live. So you have all these definitions and stuff, but are you treating them, am I treating you different because you're a ginger? Well, then, um, then I'm wrong, right? <laughs> but how do, you, and how do you bridge the gap? So how do you, so the question, he, he's asking how do you do it? My question would actually be, what steps can we take to bridge the gap? He's asking if that person is, is racist, how do I talk to them? And because you just can't, still can't be like, hey man. No, no, you, no, you're right, but you're a Christian, you're talking to someone who's having a different issue. So you have to always have the conversation with, listen, Here's where I'm at in this. The word of God tells me I can't treat anybody who's unequal. I can't, I can't show inequality. I can't treat them different because they're black. I can't treat them different because they're poor. I can't treat them different because they're on welfare. I can't treat them different because, or what, I, I can't treat them different because they're Democrat. I can't treat them different because they're conservative. I can't, because they're independent. So, and that's the way it is. God tells me to love. And you gotta keep it that simple because anything else makes it murky and, and, and dirty. And then you get into opinion and we all have an opinion and then that's where emotions get involved. I'm right, you're right, I'm right, you're right, you're right. So gotta go, you gotta go back to the facts. You see what I'm saying? Did that help at all? Uh, a little <laughs> bit, not really. Yeah. I would okay. also just add, like, is the person a Christian? And you don't have, you don't you have, have to answer. answer. Yeah. If they're, yeah, if they're not a Christian, you know, we need, we need to witness to them right. because God will do a work in their heart. Yep. If they are a Christian, then say, you know, we believe this, yep. let's talk about it, and let's get on the same page as the Bible together, and, you know, in love. Yep. 
Um, so I would say first Christian, that, that sets the tone for the conversation. That's definitely right. That part should represent. That's how it is. All right, so I actually yeah. wrote out something yeah. really quick. So yeah. I'm going to just read it. It's not going to take that long to read, but it's, 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 it's good. This is, this is what I have done, um, and this is something that you can maybe do. Um, sometimes you can just Google is friendly. You can Google different things about what does God say about how to address racism or the Bible or whatnot, and you'll see different sermons, different people that come up with different things that they say. But this is what I do. So I had this shirt, I bought this shirt at a poetry conference, and it says, Grace Alone. But I end up putting it, I had a girlfriend put on the back of it, what do you see? All right? So that's what I live by. And I live by that in everything. I said, am I extending grace? Because my justice is different to God's justice. Man's justice and God's justice is two different things. So I wrote, extend grace. Grace is freely given by God to each and every one of us. James 4, 6 reads, but he give it more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisted the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. Notice it said humble. We have to be humble when we are trying to bridge the gap of racism. Many will not see the things they do or say as being racist or part of racist culture. Yet with loving kindness, patience, and endurance, we can bring about the change we would like to see in our homes, our communities, our church, state, and nation. Amen, sister. All right? So be the change you want to see. And you just got to extend grace. And if you don't have it, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Holy Spirit, show me how to extend grace to this person who is committing a sin in love. Patience, and we are talking about earlier, don't go in violent. Because a couple of years from now, they may come back to you. That's where the patience comes in. Your, your actions will always speak louder than your words, too, man. If, if, if they constantly see you treating somebody different or right, you know, their thought process will be eventually, why does he do that? You know, something's going to change and start to work inside of them that will make them wonder, why does he treat them like that? And why do I think this way? You know, like, so, and then those, they're right. Eventually, that'll spur the conversation with you about different things. So, and that'll be your opportunity to speak into their lives. So, 